I mean, here's a guy, you know, he made his first all-star appearance. And you go, that was his first one because he's felt like an all-star for the past couple yeah. of seasons. Do you think that he's a player that can take the leap and jump into an MVP conversation? Because that seems like the next level for him. Woof. I mean, I, I can't say he has the talent to do it, right? I know he does. I think when you bring in Chris Paul, you allow Devin to go into a game free of mind. He could just go play basketball. Chris is going to get him easy shots, but this kid is ridiculous. I, I remember one of my last, well, my last year playing, I was like, I bet you can't get 11 assists. And I think he had 11 assists at halftime. And he was throwing it with his left hand, with his right hand. And I was just amazed that, like, the game is so slow to him. And that doesn't come by to everybody. So he is a special talent. And But MVP, I don't know. But he is going to be a perennial all-star. But I, it, it would need a big leap for him to be up there with the LeBrons and the Lucas and the, uh, the Kawhis and those kind of guys. Well, DeAndre Ayton, you mentioned him as a possible third guy. Uh, 18 and 11 last year in his second year in the league. And you look at this roster and it's quickly becoming a, a deep group of guys that you can trust to go out there and produce. But let's focus on Ayton first. He missed the first 25 games last season as he was suspended. And when he came back, immediately produced. Is there a level that he could get to higher than 18 and 11 in his third year? Oh yeah, I, I think he could be a 20 and 12 guy, right? Even that even that little jump is gonna be huge, but I think DeAndre Ayton is gonna anchor this defense, right? This team is shockingly very good on defense. And I think they're, as they grow, you know, having Chris Paul out there, Mikael Bridges is a really, really, really good, talented young guy. And so when you bring in a Chris Paul, when your expectations are to win every single night, it, it, it puts some pressure to, on that call to make some diamonds now. And I think DeAndre Ayton, has it in him. And, I, and sometimes I, I yell at the screen because I'm like, just take over the game, big man. Nobody can do the things that he does at his age. Um, and sometimes I think he takes a step back. But uh, the more aggressive he is, the more dominant that he wants to be every single night, the better this team is going to be. You know, we talk about first round draft picks coming in and contribute. Michael Bridges and Cam Johnson, nine and 10 the last two years as draft picks. And they have paid immediate dividends for the Phoenix Suns. How critical oh, yeah. has their development been for their success as a team and as a unit? Huge. I, and I'll start with Mikael Bridges, man. That kid is, is ridiculously talented. I mean, defensively, uh, watching him from the beginning of the year to the end, he's shown such growth on the offensive end. But I love that he relies on his defense, right? I love that he relies on his defense. And Cam Johnson has just taken advantage of his opportunities. He has a smooth, silky game. Um, and again, these guys are, are used to Devin Book being double team. But now when you're playing with a point guard, maybe the, if not the best point guard in our league, um, you're going to get you're going to get stuff spoon fed to you. So where they average six, eight, ten, they might start averaging 12 or 14. And that may, that's what's going to make them dangerous. And these guys, they are anchored by their defense. But now they're just going to get easy, easy open shots. Uh, due to double teams on Book and Aiden, and uh, Chris Paul's going to have that team run well. And they're going to be challenged from opening night facing the Dallas Mavericks, Luka Doncic, and Devin Booker. I mean, that's must-see TV. That's even before Christmas, so that's a game that you want to see. But the expectations seems like it's rising for the Suns. You see the 13 nationally televised games and also the expected win total at 38 and a half for the Phoenix Suns. You going over or under on that, Channing? Uh, I think that's about right, but I'll take the over. I think the Phoenix Suns going to whoop up on the East, personally. Uh, I think the West is tough. I think the West is tough. I have uh, Phoenix with Golden State, Dallas, New Orleans, Denver, and Memphis. So that is like my five through nine, five through ten, right? And, and the West is always hard, but I think um, – you know, that first game against Dallas is going to be a, a real tell, especially early on. Um, I know Monty Williams is going to have this team in shape. They're bringing uh, vets in who, who know how to play. Again, I think Jay Crowder is a huge, huge pickup because of his versatility, playing two, three different positions. Um, so, yeah, I have, I have Phoenix between five and seven, personally. Uh, and four, if things go right, and there's a couple injuries to one of those top four teams. But, uh, 38 and a half, I would say I'll probably take the over. 
Now, Channing, that's a big difference in this sense. If they could avoid that play-in situation at four, five, or six, that's different than being seven. Do you think they avoid being in that play-in situation? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. With this team, I think defensively, looking at their, their depth chart, I am excited to see them. They have length. They have size. They're physical. Uh, veteran presence, um, and, and they're going to be prepared every single night. Again, that comes from the culture, and that comes from the coaching, and, and what everyone expects, and that is they expect to win every single night, and that's a whole change of uh, their attitude. And this is a Harbinger Channing Fry again.